today is May the 5th, Cinco de Mayo, and I am rolling into Red Wing, Minnesota. The adventure starts today. Um, I'm on my way to the boat, and lots and lots and lots to do before we set sail on September 15th down to Key West, where we plan to spend next winter. Um, there's so much I've already done, so many hundreds of hours have already been spent on this vessel uh, getting trying to get it ready to go and uh, ready for use and the biggest pain in the balls last year was the generator so that is step one today can I get the generator running or am I going to need to replace it and there's a replacement plan in place um, all most of the winter I thought this is what we were going to do. I thought we were actually going to be removing the generator. Unfortunately, it has to come out in pieces. Uh, the engine, the generator, you know, the engine would have to be disassembled. The generator portion would have to be disassembled. So it's a lot of work, and obviously we'd like to avoid that if possible and retain the nice Cummins 12K, 12.5K uh, diesel generator that's already in the boat. Uh, so that's my plan for today, is to try and get the original generator running. So when I get to the boat, uh, I'll check back in with you guys, and we'll go from there. All right, rolling into the old Miss Marina. Not a whole lot of boats in the water yet. I've been told that there's two or three of them. We'll run down to the dock here and take a look after a little bit. But obviously, my concern today is our boat. Let's see. It's supposed to be all unwrapped, waiting for me. Oh boy. Let me take a look here. I don't know if I can get anywhere near the damn thing. I got in here. Here she is. No point in waiting. Let's get the ladder out, get up here, get in the engine room, see what we can figure out. So what do you bring with, right, when you're coming down here? So every tool you can think of. Um, most of these tools do doubled time between the boat and our RVs. So in the springtime, gathering them all up, you know, and getting them down here. Also have a generator with me because I don't have electricity where I'm sitting. New battery, battery charger, a couple of battery chargers, ladder to get up in there, some spare gasoline. I don't have any parts yet because I don't remember what uh, was left on the boat. So we're gonna find that out when we get into the engine room. They broke my flagpole. And I can see pieces of my canvas hanging in there. That's not good. Let's get in here and take a look. First look. I'll get some lights on here in a minute, but they did remove uh, the big 300 pound house batteries like I asked them to, so that's good. That means I don't have to lug them out of there. All right, and we have lights. Let's check it out. Let's come down in here. Let me grab my stool, which I forgot to dump last year. Yeah, hey, stop up at the marina and uh, talk to them about de-winterizing the boat. I noticed the air filters are off the turbos and the raw water inlet is off of the raw water pump. So I'm assuming I just gotta put that back on, but I'll probably wind up doing impellers anyway. Let me show you what we've done so far. This is my generator. And so far, we've tried a few different things. Um, the lift pump, seems to be bad. I can't swear that it's bad, but it seems to be bad. Oh, they broke that. Oh, yep, there's the rest of it. So it seems to be bad. Um, like I said, I, I, I can't swear to it because we really don't know what's going on. Um, we've tried replumbing the fuel system, putting squeeze bulbs on it, and to try and get, you know, fuel to flow, and I can't get any fuel uh, to the injectors. Now, this thing, back when we first bought the boat um, in June, it ran great, but it didn't make any electricity. Well, I found the electricity problem was a circuit breaker just, just flipped, right? And about two months later, uh, I went to start it again, and there was just, it was not having it. So... What I did was we, we decided that the rightest move 
was to chase the fuel. And in retrospect, after thinking about it all winter long, when I went to have the boat winterized, they told me that my main batteries, which are the house batteries and the starting batteries for the big, for the big engines, right? They told me that they were absolute junk. And I never checked them because they're buried under here. They're like impossible to get to. So I just never checked them. And uh, they said they had to put like eight gallons of water in them just to get them... Ah, shit. Just to get them to to crank um, so they could winterize the motors. There's no charger for the generator battery, okay? So what we were doing was we would put jumper cables on the generator battery, hook them up to the house batteries, right? And then the inverter charges the house batteries. But what was happening was the minute we would hit crank, it would put the inverter into overload, and then you had two junk house batteries sucking this one starting battery down. So we never really could just crank it, right? And I kind of feel like that was the failure. It was like we just didn't crank it long enough to get the air through the injection pump. So my plan for the day is to bypass this lift pump and rig up an electric fuel pump to pump pull through the ray core. I don't know if you can see that over here. Through the ray core, which is clean. I just changed it. Through this filter, which when I unscrew the bottom of it, it there's no water in it. And I, I was told that it was changed like two years ago and the generator has no time on it. So I'm going to trust that for a minute because we were able to suck fuel through it with the squeeze bulb. And then into the lift pump and see if I can't get it, you know, working correctly that way an alternative plan so this is the fuel return hose that goes back to the tank right is to tie into once i have an electric lift pump on here is to tie into the inlet with a little hose with a restrictor or a valve go back to the return line and that way i can turn the electric fuel pump on and cycle fuel all the way back to the tank, right? So that's my plan for the day. Uh, I'm going to get into it a little bit. I'm going to have to make a hardware store run here. I know that because I don't have much on the boat. And, uh, and then I'll check back in with you guys and let you know what's happening. Talk soon. All right, quick update. New batteries in place. Uh, battery cables appear to be pretty good. So I didn't change those out, although I probably will at some point in time. I did discover, because the boat's new to me, I did discover I can't reach it. This red cable right there, this little guy, that runs up here, which appears to be a crossover solenoid. So that would be like if uh, the generator battery's dead, I could borrow some power from the mains to get it started. You can see it goes right into the port side uh, main battery switch. And I did see eh, a parallel start slot on this 12 volt mains, right? Which leads me to believe that uh, either, <laughs> either it's this five amp breaker or there's a switch that's not installed. Um, so I'm going to do a little more investigation on that because that'll be something that'll definitely come in handy. I know it does on the motorhome, so uh, we'll get into that another day. But fuel pump is installed right there on the side of the generator. And now it's time to make a trip to the hardware store. Back in a minute. All right, so sorry I'm not shooting better video, but like, you know busy with both hands working stuff so went and put an elbow got an elbow in here it's not in all the way I need to get a heat gun so I can expand this hose this stuff's really stiff and I just can't force it on there any farther but for this test it's gonna be okay uh, fuel pumps mounted I just took and put an alligator clip on the positive side here so I'll just clip that on the battery 
and uh, the power of the fuel pump. The, the whole goal here is just to see if I can get it started, right? I'm going to crack the injector lines up there and try and bleed some air out of it and see if I can get it to start. As long as I can get it to start, then I'll come back in here and tidy some things up and replace some hoses and clean some things up. But right now, I just need to prove that it's worth saving uh, before I put another four or five hours into doing miscellaneous crap. You know, I got a new fuel line here and it's touching that pulley, right? I get it, I get it. It's not ideal, but for this test, it'll be just fine, right? I'm gonna take and put a zip tie on there, pull that out of the way so it's not touching. And uh, I'll try and set the phone down so you can see what I'm doing. And yeah, give me about uh, 10 minutes here. And let's see if we can't get this bitch fired up. Generator power's on. Crack the injector lines loose. Maybe I left them loose. Yep, they're all loose. So the goal here is I'm going to start the, the new electric boost pump or lift pump. Just keep my thumb on it. So I'll fire up this boost pump. Hey. I wonder what I'm missing that's going to squirt me in the face. Check the oil. Yeah, there goes nothing. hoping to see some fuel up here already and we might not get it like this might be junk I went all winter long saying that this generator was coming out of here and uh, and that still might be the case I guess I really I don't know yet so on the other hand it might just take some time to get fuel up there there was a lot of air in there give the starter a little break here round two <laughs> I probably should have a battery charger on this battery just to keep it topped off, but I don't. So, it's still cranking pretty good. Let's try it again. <laughs> I should have had, I should have had fuel up there by now, I would think. But, we're going to give it till there's no giving it left before we decide to tear the generator out of here. Because that's not going to be fun at all. Like, I don't want to do that. I'd really much rather keep my good diesel generator in here. Um, the plan is to put a pair of Cummins 30 amp or 3700 watt gas generators in here to replace this. Because uh, they'd be disposable, you know, if, if one goes out while we're sailing. It wouldn't be the end of the world, you know. And, and, but I just don't want to have to carry around gasoline with me. With me. Um, I haven't paid attention to my oil pressure while I'm cranking it yet. I should do that next. Is this number three or number four? I don't remember. Let's try it again. All right, smoke coming off the starter. I do have oil pressure, so that's good. So we're going to give this a minute. We. There's definitely air coming out of there. Lots of air. Oh boy, that's, unless this whole filter is full of air, 
I don't even know how that's possible. But that is in fact what's going on here, is there's just a ton of air. Those of you that don't know, diesel engine can't have air. There can't be any air in the fuel system or it just will not start. Which is why you have to crack the injector lines to bleed all the air out. I can feel the air coming out of it. I can see, oh, I can see air bubbles in the Raycor filter. So, there was a theory last year that the fuel pickup coming out of the tank might have a pinhole in it that would allow it to be drawing air from the fuel tank and the amount of air bubbles that I can see in the glass bowl of the Raycor now have me believing that, I think. So I guess the test for that, what would the test? The test would be put more diesel fuel in the tank, right? There's a fuel filter primer system on the boat as well um, for priming the big the big fuel filters for the mains and that's tied into the generator fuel feed so that means that that system is no longer good if that's what's going on also so if that's the case what do I do I'm gonna shut the camera off do a little bit more investigating so we're gonna call today a fail um, I think the pickup tube in the fuel tank is either broken or has some pinholes in it, uh, which would make sense. So back when I first bought the boat in May of last year, when I first bought the boat, uh, we only had it off the dock for one trip, right? Um, our friends came down, and I started the generator up. It ran great, but it didn't make any electricity. Well, we didn't need it to go, you know, take a trip. So we shut the generator off, and we went out and put about, you know, whatever, 45, 50 miles on the boat. So that's 20 or 30 gallons from each tank, roughly. So did we run the fuel down, and then the generator never started again. It never ran again. So I think the right move is I need to come down here with a can of diesel fuel and just dip a hose in it and make sure that the generator runs. And, and then if it does, then we know we've got an air problem, which I'm almost confident that we do. Um, like I said, with the fuel pump running, I can see the the Raycor filter over here bubbling, right? I can see bubbles floating around in the clear bowl. Um, these are, this is a bigger one, but that's a Raycor unit, right? And this one's crusty. I got to clean those out before I start the mains. Um, but I shouldn't see any bubbles in there. I just shouldn't. So it's drawing air from somewhere. Again, I don't mind fixing it, but I want to prove that the generator's worth it um, before I do that. If I spin this around and we look back here, it's impossible to get back in here, right? And if this big generator was gone, that would make a big, big big difference down here um, as far as room to work and room for activities you know um, with that said I don't know if you can see it or not but that's the top of the fuel tank there where the two 
So there's three hoses that go in there. Uh, there's a pickup for the main engine, there's a pickup for the generator, and then there's a return uh, line for the main and generator, which are which are combined, right? And you know, so here's the the real issue is is these are aluminum tanks and they're 33 years old. Um, I mean, thank God the boats only spent a little bit of time in salt water, right? So they certainly don't look corroded on on the sides I can see. Uh, but is it possible that there's corrosion going on inside on the pickup tubes? Yeah, there is. And, you know, if we break a pickup tube for either one of the main engines, that's a problem because these tanks are not coming out. Um, they go in, you know, long before the boat is finished and... Boy, I don't think you could replace them. I don't think you could replace them without cutting a big hole in the side of the boat and, and fixing it. You know, maybe a ten, twenty thousand dollar repair. There's no hatch to get to them to the top of the tank. So I, I don't know what's going to happen here if if that winds up being the deal. Now we had no problems with the main engines last year. Every time I went to fire them up. They fire right up and they run great, you know, so um, I don't, I, this this idea that a pickup tube has a pinhole in it or has fallen off, I just don't understand how that could happen unless the tank sat empty for years and years and years and years, you know, and condensation did its thing or, um, or it was badly, it was faulty you know, assembly to begin with. I just don't know. Uh, but I'm going to end it for today. I'm coming back tomorrow with a five-gallon can of diesel fuel. And we're going to try this again and see if we can't get it fired up. Um, yeah, I might add this to that, add that to this video. I might do a whole second video. I'm not sure. I'm a little disappointed right now. I had high, high hopes that... Uh, it was just going to pop right off and go. And, well, you know, I should have known better, I guess. So uh, I'm going to sign off for the day. And uh, we'll be back here on Shipfaced tomorrow. See you then.